intensity distribution of the double slit interference pattern. Now, let's say that we have two slits and that are acting as coherent sources of sinusoidal waves with angular frequency omega. Now, uh, light is an electromagnetic wave, so it has an electric field component and magnetic field component. And if we concentrate on the electric field component, at a point P on the screen, we will have an electric field E0 sine omega t that comes from the first slit and E0 sine omega t plus phi that comes from the second slit. So remember that we have uh, two slits, S1 and S2, and we have the electromagnetic waves that are hitting point P and we're looking at the electric field components of these electromagnetic waves. So... Um, the path difference between these two waves, as we have discussed before, is given by d sine theta in the framework of the parallel ray approximation. And if we have a path difference of one wavelength, this corresponds to a phase difference of 2 pi, because sine is periodic with 2 pi. So the path difference divided by a wavelength is phase difference divided by 2 pi. So we can reflect the fact that we have a path difference of d sine theta into the electric field component of the electromagnetic wave by noting that the phase difference is 2 pi over lambda times path difference. Now 2 pi over lambda times path difference, where the path difference is 2, two d sine theta, becomes 2 pi over lambda d sine theta. Therefore, we have the total electric field at point P, the sum of the electric field contributions from slit 1 and slit 2, E0 sine omega t plus sine omega t plus phi, where phi is given by 2 pi over lambda d sine theta. Now we have to remember a uh, trigonometric identity. Sine A plus sine B is 2 sine A plus B over 2 cosine A minus B over 2. So we can uh, recall that sine A plus B over 2 would be sine A over 2 cosine B over 2 plus cosine A over 2 sine B over 2. And cosine A minus B over 2 is cosine A over 2 cosine B over 2 plus sine A over 2 sine B over 2. Now... Uh, if we multiply these, sine A over 2 cosine B over 2 multiplied with sine A over 2 sine B over 2 would give us uh, basically sine square A over 2 sine B over 2 cosine B over 2. But we, with the 2 here, this would become sine B times sine square uh, A over 2. So uh, this would be this term, sine B sine square A over 2. And if we multiply it with the first term, sine A over 2, cosine A over 2 with 2 gives us sine A and cosine square B over 2. That would be this first term here. And then cosine A over 2, cosine A over 2, cosine square A over 2, sine B over 2, cosine B over 2 with 2 makes sine B. So this would be sine B, cosine square A over 2. And the last term, cosine A over 2, sine A over 2 with 2 becomes sine A and then sine square b over 2. Now you can this, see that if I take this into sine a parentheses, I have sine square b over 2 plus cosine square b over 2 is 1, and sine b parentheses, sine square a over 2 plus cosine square a over 2 is 1. So indeed, this is sine a plus sine b. So what I've called a here is omega t, and b is uh, basically omega t plus phi. So applying this trigonometric identity here to E0 sine omega t plus sine omega t plus phi, we obtain 2 E0 sine omega t plus phi over 2 and cosine phi over 2. So this will be the total electric field at that point P. As you can see, it depends on the phase difference phi. If the phase difference is zero, then surely we would have constructive interference. If you substitute zero here, you would get sine omega t cosine zero, which is uh, one. So that magnitude sine omega t 2e0 sine omega t would become magnitude wise 2e0. So that's the maximum possible uh, magnitude of the electric field you can have at point p. On the other hand, if I have a phase difference of pi, which corresponds to a path difference of lambda over 2, 
uh, this would be destructive interference. So cosine pi over 2 is 0. So um, this would give me 0 for the magnetic uh, electric field uh, magnitude at point P. So the electric field magnitude at point P because sine omega t plus pi over 2 is an oscillatory function which has uh, an amplitude 2 is 0. This would be 2 is 0 times cosine phi over 2 is the magnitude in general for the electric field component at point P. Now, if you recall that for an electromagnetic wave, uh, we have discussed that the direction of the electromagnetic wave is provided by the pointing vector 1 over mu 0 e cross p, electric field cross with magnetic field, and the electric field component is always c times b, the speed of light times b, and the average value of the pointing vector uh, magnitude e max square over 2 mu 0 c is the time averaged power per area, which is called intensity. And that is also equal to c times epsilon 0 e max squared over 2 or c times the average energy density, total average energy density. So um, we have intensity, as you can see, is proportional to the amplitude of the electric field squared. So we, here we have 2 e0 cosine phi over 2 as the magnitude. So if we take the square, we obtain 4 e0 square cosine square phi over 2. Therefore, if we, if we consider this is the maximum intensity that we can have, uh, or proportional to the maximum intensity we can have, then we will have i is equal to i max cosine square phi over 2. Because this is not the only term that makes intensity. We have this 1 over 2 mu 0 c here. So uh, intensity is proportional to cosine square phi over 2, where phi is, as we have shown here, 2 pi over lambda d sine theta. Now, uh, we have sine theta approximately equal to tangent theta for small angles. So small angle intensity distribution would have this property where sine theta can be replaced by y over L because that was, remember, in the uh, Young's double slit experiment, y over L is tangent theta, which is for small angles, equal to sine theta. So uh, we can substitute for sine theta y over L. So therefore, this will become 2 pi over lambda d y over L. Uh, so that's the small angle phase difference. So for constructive interference, we should have phi over 2 equals to 0, plus or minus pi, plus or minus 2 pi, or plus or minus 3 pi, so that we would have a pi dy over lambda l equals to m pi, where m is 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc. And this gives us, for the locations, y is equal to lambda l over d times m. So these are the uh, bright locations for, so that's the constructive interference, bright fringe locations. So noting that our intensity distribution is i max cosine square pi d sine theta over lambda, if we plot this, we basically see this periodic uh, function here. Intensity reaches the maximum value when the phase difference is zero, in lambda 2 pi minus uh, 2 lambda minus lambda 2 lambda corresponding to uh, phase difference of 2 pi 4 pi etc so if we have more than two slits in the experiment in young's double slit experiment we have young's n slit experiment what would we observe we observe primary and secondary maxima instead of a single maximum here and the intensity uh, at of the primary maximum is n square, where n is the number of slits, capital N square times intensity of the secondary maximum. So if you look at, for example, n equals 3 here, we have a primary maximum and secondary maximum, uh, and the intensity of the primary maximum is 9 times the intensity of the secondary maximum. And the number of secondary maxima is n minus 2, which is 1. So we have only one secondary maximum. So as you can see, it's n minus 2 is the number of secondary maxima. As n increases, primary maxima get narrower because we have to allocate space for secondary maxima. So n equals 4, you can see this gets sharper. n equals 10, it gets really sharp. 
uh, and the ratio of the primary to secondary maxima will increase. For example, for n equals 10, this will be 100 times the intensity of the secondary maximum. So apart from that, uh, we, we can see that we have uh, an envelope here uh, for this intensity distribution. This is an experimental result. The decrease in the intensity as we go far away from the central bright fringe is due to diffraction from individual slits. This is something we will address in the upcoming lectures, the diffraction effect uh, from the single slits individual slits that gives this envelope to this intensity distribution pattern. Okay, to summarize, we talked about the intensity distribution of the double slit and n slit interference pattern. Uh, in order to uh, find this distribution, we need to know the electric field, total electric field at a point P, uh, and provided that we have a general phase difference phi between the uh, rays coming from the two slits, uh, which is related to the path difference with this expression delta over lambda is phi over 2 pi using this trigonometric identity sine a plus sine b is 2 sine a plus b over 2 cosine a minus b over 2 we discover that the electric field at that point p has a magnitude 2e0 cosine phi over 2 multiplied by this oscillatory function sine omega t plus phi over 2. Indeed, we see that when the phase difference is 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, the uh, electric field magnitude is maximized. When it is uh, pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, it is 0. We have destructive interference. And the intensity uh, which is the time averaged power per area, it's given by the average magnitude of the pointing vector, is proportional to E max squared, therefore it's proportional to the magnitude of the electric field at that point squared, so it is uh, proportional to cosine squared phi over 2, uh, and so we can write the intensity as maximum intensity cosine squared phi over 2, where the maximum intensity would be given by the maximum value of the electric field uh, for uh, e, 2e0 parentheses squared 4e0 squared over 2 mu0 c would be the maximum intensity. So uh, with the phase difference equaling 2 pi over lambda d sine theta for constructive interference, um, we can see that sine theta is almost equal to tangent theta y over L. We have phase difference 2 pi over lambda L dy, small angles. And for constructive interference, phi over 2 is 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. We see that the bright fringe locations are lambda L over d times m. m is the order of interference. So uh, the intensity distribution gives us this nice uh, oscillatory function uh, for two slits, but when we have more than two slits, we observe primary and secondary maxima such that the number of secondary maxima is n minus 2, capital N minus 2, and the ratio of the primary to secondary maximum is given by n squared times uh, the secondary intensity. So we see that as the number of slits increases, the maxima get sharper, uh, and the ratio between the secondary and primary maxima becomes uh, bigger, it's proportional to n square. And furthermore, for all of these interference patterns, we have an envelope here that is due to the diffraction from individual slits, which we will discuss in the upcoming lectures.